Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. That was good. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Beep. Hello to all you new subscribers stopping in and joining us on the channel where we try to have a lot of outboard and boat and other kind of fun. Um, mostly outboards. Well, I've got about two days of weather here. That It broke. It's really pretty out. But I've also got about a million projects going. Projects. Um, still going on the 30 Evinrude. And I was going to do the bonnet and cut a hole and all. I still, I'm, I'm right, you know, this way, that way. I'm not sure because I found another bonnet that is the actual bonnet for that motor. And it's not bad either. So I might, I might just clean that one up. I'm not sure yet. Not sure. Um, but I've got whew, a bunch of projects going. So i show you. I show you. So, still doing some parting out and scrapping and taking to the scrap heap and uh, hope to take you guys on a ride out there. You understand? And uh, my problem is, half time I go to scrap heap, I bring home more than I take. I'm my own worst enemy. But, um, yeah, I've just got so many things. But I did find some really cool stuff um, beside the dumpster that I, I just liked them. I'm my own worst enemy. I can't help myself. Let's look. Are those some cool stool? Those are cool, ain't they? Yeah, so what? They're a little rusty. I clean that up. I hit it with a wire wheel, and then I think what I'm going to do, because I want them for outside here at my table. But you got to met. Them as retro as can be. They're fake retro, of course, but... They're yellow, and they're purdy. And once I get... What I'm planning on doing with the, uh... The bases there, and, and the bases work just fine. You can raise them up and raise them down with just a lever. You can't see the lever, but it's it's there. It's tucked right up under the seat. And uh, what I'm going to do is hit them with the wire wheel, and then I'm going to hit them with the rust blaster. You can see it right over there. It says rust blast. I'm going to hit them with that, and then a little coral seal. And then I'm thinking I'm going to get some of that, like, Herculiner stuff, bed liner frame protector I think they got about 350,000 names for it, but I, I was thinking of coating them good with that. And then they make good outdoor stools. Got my high lift handyman almost put back together. Been parting out, got a bunch of transom clamps over there, propeller, ba dee ba da ba doo ba doo. Here's the 30. But then I got this too. I'm going to come on out of the sun. I picked this up because I needs one. Um, guy down the street from me had this, and it's really in pretty good shape. He sold it to me for pittance, um, and it, it runs, it starts right up. I think it's got a bent blade or a bent spindle shaft or something. Um, when I engage the blades, it makes a clatter and clack, 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 up under the uh, deck there. But I scraped all that out. And the fret, what I, the frame is solid as can be. That's what I wanted. The, the uh, front end, you know, the tie rods and all that are really good coated and in good shape. So I bought it for next to nothing. And uh, even though that yard ain't that big, I'm a geezer. You understand? And us geezers gotta sit right there, then push. All right, what else you got going? What else you got going? This is the Cody Bastro Uno. You can see I got this over there. 
This is Cody Bastro Uno. And I've been doing work on it. Now look. Look at those windshield wipers. Is that cool? Is that cool? I did that in the spirit of my coming back home to Alaska from Florida. Lumina. Chevy Lumina. It was this color green and blue. And I said to myself, I said, you got to get some blue on this van. In honor of the Luminati. Because my old Lumina was a fantastic car. But, uh... I've been steadily working on this one. This is, is the, the first one I got. I have put a new starter, a new alternator, a new fuel tank, a new fuel pump. I have put a new ignition module. I have put a new distributor, new distributor rotor, um, changed oil, oil filter. I have ordered and, and received new NGK plugs and wires, which I have to do. And I've put new door handles and rods and things in it so I can get in and out of it. And it's coming along nice. Um, I still got to do the, the plugs and wires. And, and oh yeah, I want to do the uh, transmission fluid and filter. And when I get done with the, the wires and plugs, the tranny filter gasket, and fluid oh yeah I put new brake lines and stuff on it too um, when I get those few things that I gotta get done done to it I'll be ready to start on Cody Bastro dos so the van the craftsman Evan Rude the weed eaters I just pulled out a new motor for that one. That one, um, it's got ring issues. It's got no power and stuff like that. And I can, uh, yeah, compression issues. So we'll fix that. And then I got the pressure washer. <gasps> Does it ever hit? Oh, look at my plum tree over there. You see it way over there? Looking good. But I ain't going to get no plums. It's too late in the year, and, and I've never, I, I never even saw a flower, a bud, what do they call that, a bloom? I don't know what they call it. Uh, what do they call that? They, uh, anyway, my apple tree over there has got all kind of flowers on it, but not my plum tree. I get no plum jam this year. <laughs> but, yeah, got all kind of stuff going, so let's look at some of the other stuff I've got going. I'll be back. Okay, the 55 commercial, seen better days. Um, I'll probably take the throttle, tiller handle and cable, recoil, it's got a manual primer, starter has good tooth, uh, the Bendix and all. Solenoid don't look too good. I'll get a few things off of it though. You understand?
Zafari. Tsunami warning is in effect for Kodiak, Sandpoint, and Cold Bay. Any tsunami activity that they're forecasting for Sandpoint will happen around 1210. For Kodiak, about 1235. For Cold Bay, they are predicting 135 in the morning. There is a tsunami warning in effect and you should be evacuating to higher ground and getting your family there as quickly as you can. The tsunami warning means that you should evacuate to higher ground immediately, even though they're forecasting the waves for a little bit later from now, it's not that long. So um, you should be moving to higher ground now. If you're in a tsunami warning, a tsunami with damaging waves and a powerful current or currents is possible. Repeated coastal flooding is possible as waves arrive on shore, move inland, and drain back into the ocean. Strong and unusual waves, currents, and inland flooding can drown or injure people or weaken and destroy structures on land and in water. Water filled with floating or submerged debris can injure or kill people and weaken or destroy buildings or bridges is possible. Strong and unusual currents and waves in harbors, marinas, bays, and inlets may be especially destructive. Some impacts may continue for hours to days after the arrival of the first wave. The first wave may not be the largest or so later waves may still be larger. Coasts facing all directions are threatened because the waves can wrap around islands and headlands and into bays. Strong shaking or rolling of the ground indicates an earthquake has occurred and a tsunami may be imminent. A rapidly receding or receded shoreline, unusual waves and sounds, and strong currents are signs of a tsunami. The tsunami may appear as water moving rapidly out to sea, a gentle rising tide like a flood with no breaking wave, as a series of breaking waves or a frothy wild wall of water. If you're in a tsunami area, you should evacuate inland or to higher ground. We are in a tsunami warning area. Currently, you should be evacuating to higher ground beyond the des designated tsunami hazard zones or move to an upper floor of a multi-story building depending on your situation. Move out of the water, get off the beach and away from harbors, marinas, breakwaters, bays and inlets. Follow the instructions of local authorities. Once again, we're in a tsunami warning. There was an earthquake in Sand Point about 51 miles, 55 miles southwest of Sand Point. It was a 7.4 magnitude earthquake at about 10 minutes to 11. The forecasted tsunami start for Sand Point is at 12.10 a.m. 
Kodiak 1235, Cold Bay 135 in the morning. So you can see this ear on that blade there has been over a little bit. That one a little bit, not as bad. This one a little bit the other way. So I got my propeller anvil right here. And I'm just going to tap them back out of there. Beautiful. Okay, then I'll go in there on my grinding wheel and I'll dress that up a little more even. Then we'll give her a coat of paint. Hey, I got them all dressed up nice now and then I'm just gonna give them a coat of paint. Gloss charcoal gray is what this propeller is going to end up being. Get over the brush.
Well... Well, we got that 30 horse. All squared away and ready for the four cell rack. The paint I used... Just that. was not a perfect match but it was you know it was pretty close it's called indigo met met indigo met and you can look at the cap there it it you know it's pretty close to that omc dark it has a little purplish hue, more than a, a dark blue. There's some purplish things. Purple. So, but it, it, you know, it's indigo. It don't say blue, but it's mostly blue. I guess it's, it's blurple. Bl blurple. It's blurple. Um, so that's what I used on the, the main body. The bonnet, I went with the one that, it was a 30 bonnet. Um, I wish the lettering was better on the side and such, but it is what you get. But it fits really nice, closes easy, and it's the correct horsepower. Their propeller, I use charcoal gray, dark charcoal gray. Um, so that's what I did there. Um, dark. Um, so... It is now ready for the for sell em rack. I would uh, hook a hose to it and run it and everything for you, but the paint's still tacky, tacky, sticky, so we're going to let it sit overnight at least. But uh, in my next video, I will start that video off with this, with the hose hooked up to it and everything, but I want it to dry. Um, all the corrosion, that bug, I'm going to eat that bug. All the corrosion and stuff I, I got off of there cleaned the inside and hosed her down washed her up and i put grease and never seize i put never seize on the inside thrust washer and then just regular marine grease on the uh, splines themselves and uh it's ready to go that should be about a 800 dollar ish motor it's what i would call just a you know a good running utility engine somebody looking to just go out here and get some subsistence fish do a little jigging you know bottom fishing halibut flounders that kind of thing um it, perfect for that just an old tin boat or whatever an old fiberglass pleasure skiff that's been gutted that one's tiller operated i was going to do the starter and rectifier and everything but uh No, no. I'm going to save that starter bracket for a later model. I think I deduced this one down to an 89. And uh, when I get an 05 or something like that, you know, something a little cleaner and such, then uh, cosmetically I'll go the rectifier or electric start route. Now, this one starts really easy, runs really good, idles, pees strong. So it'll be good seller in, in the utility platform. So, 
hopefully somewhere in there there was a hack or something um but uh it's getting late sun's going down <clears throat> In a long day. No, so I think I'm gonna go over there and sit, converse with Fret for a little bit. But as always, that is one more hack from Kodiak. Thanks for watching. More vids are coming on Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.